Hey guys, this is Revert. So in this video, we're going to be discussing five primary camera settings to help the footage you're shooting look as crisp as it can. And just before we get into the video, the settings I'm going to be discussing don't only apply to GoPros, but they also apply to DSLRs as well. So don't worry, I've got you covered. Those five settings are frame rate, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and white balancing. So first let's talk about frame rate. Now with frame rate, there's only two things you really need to know. If you live in the United States, it's 30 frames a second. And then if you live in the United Kingdom, it's 25 frames a second. You don't need to push the frame rate any higher than this because you're not shooting a slow-mo video. And depending what other region of the world you live in, it's simply just a case of Googling it to find out what frame rate is catered to the region that you live in. The second thing that I want to talk about is shutter speed. Shutter speed determines how sharp you want movement in the footage you're shooting. In this example of a low shutter speed, you have a lot of light exposure hitting the sensor of the camera, but you're getting a lot of blurred movement. And in this example of a high shutter speed, you're getting a more choppy aspect to the footage, but you're losing light. You're gonna want to adjust the shutter speed depending on the environment that you're shooting in. With indoor settings like this, I would say that you can happily shoot at 150th to 100th of a second. And then if you're at a festival or in, in general just at an outdoor environment, I would say stick to around about a hundredth of a second to two hundredth. Number three on the list is aperture. Aperture controls how much light you let into the camera. In the filming industry, the measurement used to determine the level of aperture is called f-stop. If you have a really low f-stop, you're opening the, the lens's aperture to let as much light hit the sensor as possible. If you have a really high f-stop, then you're restricting the lens's aperture to let the least amount of light hit the sensor. The obvious advantage that you have for shooting on a DSLR is that you're gonna be able to change the lens for a lower f-stop so that you can have real broad control over how much light you let hit the sensor. Unfortunately, for GoPros, however, you're just stuck with the one lens. There are still aperture settings inside the camera, but you're just going to have to make do with what's available. The fourth thing that I want to talk about is ISO. ISO is a measurement of controlling the sensitivity that your camera has to available light. A high ISO level is ideal for when you're in a situation where there's not a lot of natural light or any light at all. But what you've got to bear in mind is if you start to push the ISO, say beyond 1600, then you're starting to get into the realm of getting grain on your footage and that can often sometimes lead to the footage being unusable. However, if you find yourself in an ideal situation where you've got a decent amount of natural light, or in this case, artificial light, then I would say there's no need for you to have the ISO high at all. I would probably put the GoPro to its lowest ISO setting, which is about 400 ISO. And for DSLRs, I would say, keep it to around about two to 300 ISO. The fifth and final setting that I want to talk about, which I personally regard as probably the most important setting to take into account when setting up the camera, is white balancing. White balancing controls the color temperature of the footage you're shooting. Color temperature is a characteristic of visible light. In cameras, this method is measured in what's called Kelvin. Depending upon whether you're gonna be shooting this video outside or inside, is really gonna determine what Kelvin setting you have your white balancing set to. However, if you're shooting inside, as is so often the case, you'll probably be okay with sticking to about four to 5,000 Kelvin. The lower end of the Kelvin measurement is more suited to an outside environment, but always check the color temperature before you go ahead and shoot the footage. With white balancing though, there are always the templates that you can go for that are already built into the software of the cameras. But when you want that real hands-on manual control over how the tone of the footage looks, I would really sincerely say take control of the Kelvin measurement. So there you go, those are my five primary settings for setting up a GoPro and a DSLR ready for a shoot. I just want to say thank you for watching this video and I hope it's broadened your knowledge on how to take control of what is essentially your product and you start to notice really crisp looking footage. Catch you soon.